While doing a live stream on Twitch with the NBC, I had a basic lighting set up while over at Kevin the Lineman's house. And it had a number of these standard LED bulbs. And one of them, in the middle of the stream, just randomly made a loud pop noise and ceased to be. It didn't take out the others, which is good, particularly when you're live streaming. So I thought, it's time to open this up and see what's inside it. So I'll zoom up so you can actually see me impale myself hideously with a sharp implement. And we'll see what component failed inside. You can place your bets now if you wish. There's a linear regulator most likely in these. Uh, a capacitor. Um, the LEDs are a low risk. Uh, oh. Well, I can already see that the bridge rectifier has spewed its guts out the side. Uh, right, tell you what, we'll go in a bit deeper. We shall take uh, the cap off the back. We'll remove the circuit board from this completely, just in case that something has led up to that, like the capacitor blowing up. This is not expected. I wouldn't normally expect the actual, the bridge rectifier to show signs of failure. It may just have been a victim of the circumstances. Let me just grab a screwdriver here and run it around to slice all that uh, glue out. Not as really needed, I don't think. I think I can just use unreasonable force to prise this up. Oh, is it coming out? Is it coming out? It's coming out. So one of the connections will be onto the shell. Right here. So I have to cut. I have to get the snips in there and cut that wire. Tricky, tricky. And then this comes out. I would guess the fusible resistor has blown. In fact, I can see a little splat in the side here. That's useful to know the fusible resistors work. Let's test that, in fact, the fusible resistor. So I shall bring in a, a different meter from normal. Say hello to the Aning uh, 623 automotive meter with a very big display. And it always defaults when you turn it on to DC volts. I suppose that's all right for mechanics, not all right for us. Let's select the resistance and we'll see what resistance this fusible resistor is. It's it's totally fused. It is absolutely open circuit. That's pretty amazing. Excellent. Now, I kind of want to actually find out what triggered that for the bridge rectifier. Maybe it's the bridge rectifier that did actually fail here, but I, I would have thought something else may have triggered that. I'm not really sure. Uh, give me one moment. I'm going to have to think of things to do to experiment this. I may even get the hot air gun out and uh, take this bridge rectifier off and see what it looks like. One moment, please. Okay, so continuing on, here's where we're at. Testing in circuit, the bridge rectifier is showing a odd resistance. Now, I did try desoldering it, but this is an aluminum core PCB, so that's not that easy a thing to do. Let's cut the bridge rectifier out. What I'm also going to do, this capacitor is 6.8 microfarad, but it's only showing 6 microfarad. Is it the capacitor that initiated the failure? I have a high voltage tester here to test that with. We can find out. So let's see if we can just uh, nibble this off. Not six, oh, there it goes. Oh, that's all just splattered anyway. Yeah, the bridge right fire is definitely dead. Let's cut it clear and see if we've got, uh, if that completely cleared the fault. Well, the what we, we can see here. So it's not measuring anything across the capacitor position where it did before. The capacitor, let's give it first 250 volts and then 500 volts and see how it fares in a insulation test. This is my socket and C tester. I've not had it out for a while. In the time since I last used it, the rubber trim here has just disintegrated. It's just all crumbling off. It's degraded. That's disappointing, but that's okay. It's what's happened. So we'll stick the leads onto this capacitor, negative onto negative. I mean, I know you want me to do it the other way around, but no. And we'll give it, first we'll give it 250 volts. And we'll see what the meter says for that. So turn this on. 
and we'll select insulation test and we'll select the test volts which we've got 250, 500 or 1000 volts and we'll just do a test it's showing about 300 ohms it's varying but that might just be the thing charging up it's increasing don't know if that's just charge a capacitor Oh, that's going to be charged up to a spicy voltage now. Oh, it's showing this spicy voltage. Anyway, uh, let's raise the test volts up to 500 volts. It's just still charging that capacitor. This isn't really a decisive thing, is it? Hard to say if that's just leakage. It is kind of staying constant, but I don't know. It's it's a tricky one. One way to test, we can bridge this now. This fully charged capacitor up to about 5 volts across this. Oh, you know what? That didn't pop. That does suggest it is self-discharging. Let's bring some other metal object in. Oh, that's so this capacitor maybe maybe the cause of the breakdown. That's interesting. One other experiment we can do, just for fun, let's mega the circuit board and see if we can actually make it light up. So I'll grab a couple of bits of wire and we'll try that. Um, right now, in fact, hold on, I can just stuff this bit of wire up. The resistor, incidentally, is blutered. That's what you'd expect. It's done its job. It's a fusible resistor and it has fused. So we've got the connections. That's the positive. So we'll stick the positive through like that. And we've got the negative. So we'll stick it through like this. I'm just faffing around here. I mean, it's quite fun to faff around, really. Okay, so this is negative. That is positive. Let's see if it makes the LEDs light. So we'll stick the negative and the negative. And the positive and the positive. Let's see if I can give myself an electric shock in the process. And uh, is that visible? Let's zoom down. Let's focus down onto this sort of area here. Uh, let's set it to the 250 volt test. Oh, it lights up. <laughs> That's it doing the test. You can see it actually doing the test on it. Lovely. And the 500 volt test would just basically, it's light and static. Okay. But it will be dissipating a bit more. Uh, power so that the regulator circuitry looks fine to be honest it looks as though it may possibly have been the capacitor feeling that took out the uh, bridge rectifier which kind of makes sense because it's right after it and then that blew the fuse but the good news is it did so there's no capacitors in this it should be alright it, it did so in a very controlled manner it didn't really go majorly bang it just made a distinctive pop when it failed i tell you what this has an illuminated uh, logo on the back it's quite stylish really as you're turning oh, and also, uh, this has a very bright illuminated display. He says it doesn't look so bright under the studio lights, but it is a very bright display, and it's a huge display. That's what I like about it. It is aimed at mechanics. I just thought this would make an interesting change. Right, what was I doing? Oh yes, just for completeness. Just for completeness, here is the schematic. So we'll just take a look at the components on it and the bit that failed. So this is a fusible resistor. Don't know its value because it has gone bang, which it's supposed to do. We've got the bridge rectifier, which has also gone bang, but it may have been caused by this capacitor here bridging out briefly, causing the a pulse of high current, which blew up the bridge rectifier and took out the resistor. It's possible that the capacitor is innocent. Maybe it was all done by the bridge rectifier, but I think it was probably the capacitor. But after that, uh, it goes through the series string, a big string of LEDs, multi-chip LEDs, and then it's got the SM2082 chip here with a couple of the current um, sensing chips. And by changing the value of these, or just cutting one out, you can actually change the power of the light. But there we have it. Interesting stuff, and uh, well worth taking apart, to be honest. That was quite fun. Oh, look at that. Look how f out of focus it is. When, when when was it complete? Was that completely out of focus the whole thing? That's annoying. But anyway, it is what it is. It's just welcome to this particular device that I'm recording with that can't focus on black and white. This is just very odd. 
very strange, really crisp, solid lines as well. Its focus is rubbish. But anyway, uh, that's probably messed up the complete end of the video there where I showed this schematic. Uh, but that's okay. It's what's happened. So there we have it. Uh, a dead bulb that went pop in a controlled manner and uh, blew its fusible resistor in, in that controlled manner and failed with no significant drama. Quite good.